Good evening and welcome to State of Business on Art Television. I'm Tamiru Nimsat. Let's have a look at the headlines. President encourages competitive modern agriculture to up exports. Jaffna International Trade Fair 2024 will be held in January. Organizers informs. News in detail. President Ranil Vikramasinghe said that the merging of the functions of Plantations Ministry with Agriculture is a pivotal step towards increasing the productivity of the country's output. The President pointed out that with the predicted growth in population numbers, if Sri Lanka utilizes modern technology and engineering, there is an opportunity to increase agriculture exports of the country. President Vikramasinghe said this speaking at a press conference held in Colombo on the 24th of this month. There's much scope for engineering and agricultural modernization. That is where we have to be. We must ensure that we are competitive in agricultural products and also that we can improve our productivity. If you look at our output in regard to rice, how much are we producing per hectare? We should have not even four metric tons. Australia with a similar climate produces 10. If we can just get to 7 or 8, we'll have surplus rice to export. Because by mid-century, the population from Saudi Arabia to Indonesia, or you can say from South Africa to Indonesia, will increase. Who feeds them? Who gives them food? There are so many other items that we have to certainly uh, look at. Are the agricultural products Use the most modern method. Gradually, in, within a decade and a half, you have to get all our farmers and to use modern technology. One issue, major issue will be provision of capital. I think the rest, they will be able to adapt. We have taken the most important step on Monday. I merge the functions of plantation industries and agriculture together. This has not happened till after 1970. These two subjects had been separate. In all countries, Agriculture is a single subject. Look at the big agricultural exporters, the modern ones, Thailand, Malaysia. It's one ministry, one subject. Speaking at the event, President Vikram Singh mentioned that the government will be merging all the agriculture research institutes in the country to create a university for agriculture technology. The president also said that the government is planning to redesign the Ministry of Agriculture to facilitate the agriculture modernization process. I have asked my officers to get aid from outside on designing a new agricultural ministry. How does the agriculture ministry function in Thailand? How does it function in Malaysia? Without having the ministerial structure, we can't go ahead. Then, how do we get to the, how do we modernize the agriculture? That's the next stage. In doing this, we have also found new land. I think Maha Valley still has about 200,000 acres to be opened up. Then if you are modernizing the plantations, there's about 300,000 acres there to 400,000 acres. Another group to help are the tea smallholders. So like that, we'll have about 700,000 to a million acres where we can start our modernization in agriculture. These are the plans we are working out. And then to take in the agriculture research institutes, a number of them in the country, combine them, bring them under one institution, the University for Agricultural Technology, and we'll upgrade all those institutions. You get private sector participation also. So in this way, we will look at modernizing agriculture. It only it means not only having people educated and passing out in agriculture, but also in engineering. So these are the new fields that we are working at to get a new economy going. And this is where we will require our participation as to how we go forward. Minister of Water Supply and Estate Infrastructure Development, Jeevan Thonderman, emphasized that there are no plans to increase the water tariffs. He said the ministry is diligently working on implementing a water tariff formula set to roll out in January 2024. Minister Thonderman said this at a media briefing held at the Presidential Media Centre recently. The minister said that the focus is on developing a cost recovery formula in collaboration with the Water Board and Asian Development Bank. The minister refuted the recent rumours speculating about the current formula's intention to guarantee fair water access while safeguarding those in vulnerable segments of society. The minister emphasised that of the nearly 3 million connections within the Water Board, the estate sectors are excluded 
as they fall under the Rural Community Water Supply Department. Jeevan Thonderman said that this department extends its services to all rural areas, working closely with 5,000 community-based organisations. He shared that the Ministry of Estate Infrastructure is preparing to commemorate the upcountry community's contributions to the nation on the 2nd of November. Minister Thonderman also said that a charter featuring seven committees has been formed within the ministry to address a wide range of issues specific to the plantation sector. He stressed that these committees are dedicated to economic upliftment of women and children on gender equality, health, education, sports and other activities. Stay tuned. We will return after the short commercial break. Welcome back after the break. Organized by Lanka Exhibition and Conference Services Private Limited, together with the Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Yalpanam, the Jaffna International Trade Fair 2024 will be held in January next year. The transformative annual event Jaffna International Trade Fair is being organized for the 14th year and it will be held on 19th, 20th and 21st of January next year under the theme Your Gateway to the North. Jaffna International Trade Fair, which was commenced in 2002, has evolved into a global platform connecting the varied businesses as well as bringing positive changes in the lives of the people in the northern province. Revealing the plans for the 2024 trade fair, organizers said that investors from India, Canada and Indonesia have already confirmed their participation in the three-day fair. The event has also opened doors for entrepreneurs to form profitable and strong partnerships with leading conglomerates and businesses across the island. Diesel and Motor Engineering PLC, which is known as DEMO, is the platinum sponsor for the event this time and Adrian Solar and Tokyo Cement are there as the gold sponsors. The event is also assisted by El Laval Horticulture, Ruhno Foods, Plenty Foods, Sunmatch Company, Phoenix Industries, Rhino Roofing Products Limited, Fentos Limited, Kales Food Products, Ceylon Cold Stew, Dali Butler & Company, Forever Skin Naturals, CBL Convenience Foods and Anchor as the silver sponsors. The motto of Jaffna International Trade Fair is Gateway to North. Wahad is our business community friendly, welcome joint ventures, tie-ups and large orders which are the highlights of the business matchmaking between the people from the South and North. It is indeed a great movement, not only for the inhabitants of the North, but also for the entire country to see the gradual revival of the region. CCIY will use our expertise to promote the show around the Northern province. Lanka Exhibition and Conference Services Private Limited Chief Executive Officer Azim Mukhtar says that they will be able to bridge the gap and ensure that all communities across the island are on par with the modernized western province through initiatives like Jaffna International Trade Fair. Chief Marketing Officer of DEMO, Dinuk Piri, said that the trade fair in Jaffna will be a strong and steady platform to fuel the dreams and aspirations of the Sri Lankans. And it is not only the expo that creates business in Jaffna, from the hotels to the food outlets, to the transport providers, to the taxi drivers, tuk-tuk drivers, everybody benefits because of this exhibition that takes place for three days. And that is the uniqueness of us doing this show. Because for that week, it is, and the exhibitors do not only come for the three days, they come either one week prior or and also they continue to stay one week after to continue their business. So during that one and a half weeks, all hotels in Jaffna are full, all restaurants are full, and I must say all bars are also full in the evenings. So this is what we bought to Jaffna. Lanka Exhibition and Conference Services Private Limited, Chief Executive Officer Asim Mukhtar, further addressing the media, also reminded how the Jaffna International Trade Fair was commenced more than 21 years ago. In 2002, a few of us together with the Yalpanam Chamber of Commerce, a call for a meeting by the late Dr. Jayalat Jayawardhana, who was the Minister of Rehabilitation at that time. 
and he said why not we have an event he didn't say exhibition let's have an event in the north for the northern people so as exhibition is our forte we decided okay let's look at doing an exhibition and doing a trade show where we introduce the south to the north so that's how we began jafna with only 30 booths and it was at a school which we hired and it was not it was not at all an easy task because at that time if i do re recall jafna was under the ltte and at Omantai checkpoint, at 4 o'clock in the evening, they closed the road. You cannot cross over from Omantai to go to Jaffna. So we all had to take all our 40 companies that were participating in a convoy. And this, this is how they were checked, you know, and they had to come as a convoy. They couldn't come individually. They had to come as a convoy, go into Jaffna and participate at the exhibition. It was a very successful event, I must say. And since then, we have grown to what you can see in front of you today. That's all our news for today. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. Take care and good night.